Hello everyone, and this is the, the third part of my video on area of region bounded by different curves. And uh, for this video, I'm going to show you how the area of triangle and the area of a circle is obtained by applying some concepts of region between and under curves and by applying some concepts of uh, integration. So we all know that the area of a triangle is equal to one half times the product of the base and the height and that of the circle is pi r square. So our task is to show that the area of a triangle is one half times the product of the base and the height. And to do this, we draw the Cartesian coordinate system and uh, from here, we'll be calling out points, say 0, 0, B0, and uh, 0, H. And uh, from these two points, we will be drawing a line passing through 0, H, and B0. And we now see a triangle bounded by this line the x-axis, that's y equals 0, and then the y-axis, that's x equals 0. And this triangle is a triangle with a base equal to b and an altitude equal to h. And then the next thing to do is to name this line. And there are so many ways on how you can name this line. Uh, you can use the point-slope form, two-point form, uh, the y-intercept form, and the other one is the point or the slope intercept form okay so but this time will be you can use two point forms see, since there are two points given b0 and 0h but when you see b0 so b0 is an x intercept and 0h is a y intercept so you the most convenient uh, method that you can use to draw the, to to name this line is by intercept form. So we have x over b plus y over h equals one. This is x over the x intercept plus y over the y intercept and equal to one. Okay, and then we now choose our element. Say we want to use element vertical. You notice that the element chosen is touching the line x over b plus y over h equals 1 above and below by the x-axis, and this is y equals 0. And then the limit is approach from, by the way, the, the equation to be used is y equals h minus hb over x since we are using element vertical, okay? And uh, you must solve for y in terms of x from this equation. So. You can just throw this on the other side so that will become 1 minus x over b and then you multiply everything by h so you will have h minus h over b x. And then the limit is approach from x equals 0. This is the leftmost portion of the region. And then to the rightmost portion of the region that's x equals b. Okay. So now what if you want to use horizontal rectangular element? Okay. The element chosen is touching the line x over b plus y over h equals 1 on the right side and the y-axis on the left side. Okay? And the region is bounded from, uh, from y equals 0 to y equals h above. And the equation of the lines should be written of the form x equals g of y. So b minus bh over y. And then we set it up from my previous video. We have uh, uh, drawn the equation of the area for region above the x-axis, and that is written of the form integral of g of y dy, where g of y is equal to b minus bh over y. So setting it up, we have b minus b, a, b over h y dy evaluated from 0 to h. And we are integrating with respect to a, y, so b and h are considered constant. Treating them constant, the integral would have been equal to integral of b dy is by and then you copy b over h, b over h, and then you integrate y dy by power formula, that's y squared over 2 and then evaluate it from 0 to h. So we have replacing y by h, we have b times h, that's by, minus b over 2h, then y squared will become h squared minus replace y by 0. Okay, and you will notice that b times 0, b over 2h times 0 square will become 0. And then the only thing left is to simplify this part. That's h squared over h, so you can cancel out 1h. And then you will have bh minus bh over 2. And then factoring bh, so you will have 1 minus 1 half. And 1 minus 1 half is equal to 1 half. So the area of a triangle is in fact equal to 1 half times the product of the base and the height.
Okay, we want to use vertical rectangular element. So again, the element chosen is touching uh, the line y equals h minus h over bx above and below by the x-axis and between two vertical lines x equals 0 and x equals b. So setting it up, we have the area is given by f of x, the x evaluated from a to b. And then where f of x is equal to h minus h over bx, h over bx, the x evaluated from 0 to b. Then again, we are integrating with respect to x, so h and b are considered constant. So we have hx minus h over 2bx squared evaluated from 0 to b. So here, we will now be replacing x by b. So we'll have hx, so we'll become bh, and then x squared will become b squared. So we have h over 2b times b squared, and then replace x by 0. So again, this will become 0, and simplifying this part, that's b squared over b, we'll only have b here. So you have bh minus bh over 2, and then uh, by common monomial factor, factoring bh, so you'll have quantity 1 minus 1 half. And uh, uh, 1 minus 1 half is in fact 1 half and then multiplied by bh, okay? So our second test is to show that the area of a circle is equal to pi r squared. And then again, to do this, we draw the Cartesian coordinate system. And then we will draw a circle with center at the origin whose radius is equal to r. And then we will be calling out points r0. 0 r, negative r 0, and 0 negative r. And then we will now draw our circle passing through these points with the center at 0 0. Okay, and then this, since the center of the circle is 0 0, and then this circle is named x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, and then we now choose our element. If we choose element vertical, so take note that the vertical element is touching this curve above and that below by the same curve, okay? So again, since we are using vertical element, then the equation of the curve should be written of the form y in terms of x. So this equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared shall be converted into y equals plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. <clears throat> so if you are using this curve, so you use the positive root, so that's y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. And when you are using this curve, you use the negative root since this is on the negative y-axis. So that's y equals negative square root of r squared minus x squared. And we will be using this equation, f of x minus g of x. So f of x is the equation of the curve above the region. And then g of x is the equation of the curve below the region. And the limit of integration is uh, approached from x equals negative r to x equals r. Okay, so what if we are going to use the horizontal element? So again, the horizontal element is touching this part of the circle on the right side and the half of the circle on the left side, okay? And then this equation x squared plus y squared equals r squared, since we are using horizontal element, will be converted of this form, x plus or minus the square root of r squared minus y squared. x written in terms of y, okay? And uh, if we are working on this side of the circle, you use the positive root, so this is your x equals positive square root of r squared minus y squared, and since this is located on the negative x-axis, then this will be your x equals negative the square root of r squared minus y squared. And then the limit is approach. And from y equals negative r to y equals r. And we use this formula, integral of f of y minus g of y dy. This is equation of the curve on the right side of the region g of y is the equation of the curve on the left side of the region. Okay, now one brilliant idea to solve the area of this circle is by getting quarter of this region. So we will be getting the, the first quadrantal region, this one, and you will notice that this region is equal to this region, equal to this, and equal to this. So the entire circle is now divided into four 
subregions, namely A1, A2, A3, and A4. And we have to take note that A1 is equal to A2 is equal to A3 is equal to A4, which means if you get the area of this uh, subregion, you just multiply this by 4 and you get the total area of the entire circle. And then after which we now will draw the element. So I'll be using a vertical element here. Okay. So the element is touching this arc above and this line below. Okay. So we now draw the equations. So again, the equation of this entire circle is y equals plus minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. Since the portion of the circle chosen is located on the positive y-axis, then we will be using the equation y equals the square root of r squared minus x squared. Right? And the limit is approach from x equals 0 on the leftmost and x equals r on the rightmost portion of the region. And then we set it up. Uh, we use this formula. So a is equal to the integral of f of x dx evaluated from a to b, where f of x is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. So we have a, the area, is equal to the integral of the square root of r squared minus x squared dx evaluated from 0 to r. 0 to r. Okay. Integrating, <clears throat> uh, since the integrand contains the square root of r squared min minus x squared, then we cannot think of a straightforward formula to find the integral of such function. So what are we going to do is to use a, uh, an integration technique called trigonometric substitution. In my previous videos, I have already featured uh, trigonometric substitutions, a special techniques of integration. Uh, you just check out the uh, dialogue, dialogue box below for the link of that video. And... Uh, so in trigonometric substitution, we will let x be equal to r sine theta, okay? And then we have here dx, so dx is equal to r cosine theta d theta. Differentiating both sides of the equation, so this is dx, and the derivative of this is r cosine theta d theta. And then substituting this uh, quantity to the given integrand, we now have the integral of, of the quantity, the square root of r squared, then x squared, you just square, both sides, so you'll get x squared, and this will become r squared sine squared theta. So x squared is written as r squared sine squared theta, and then dx is given by r cosine theta d theta. Okay, and then you will notice that when you simplify this part, you can factor out r squared, leading you with r squared times the quantity 1 minus sine squared theta. And do not forget that 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta, and then we'll have. Uh, huh. The square root of r squared is equal to r. So we have r, the square root of 1 minus sine squared theta, times the quantity called r cosine theta d theta. And then r times r, so you have r squared, okay? And then 1 minus sine squared theta is equal to cos cosine theta, sorry. 1 minus sine squared theta is cosine squared theta. When you take the square root, that will lead you to cosine theta. And these two are the important uh, trigonometric identi identities that we are going to use for this portion of our problem. So again, 1 minus sine squared theta equals cosine squared theta. And then what happened here is you multiply these two. Okay? So you have r squared outside because of this r and r here. So that's r squared integral of cosine theta from this quantity. And then times cosine theta is cosine squared theta. And then, again, there's no direct formula for the integral of cosine squared theta d theta. Then we use this identity. We have r squared times the integral of the quantity 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2 theta d theta. Okay, and then we have integrating 1 half d theta is 1 half theta. And then you just copy 1 half. Okay, and then the integral of cosine 2 theta is 1 half sine 2 theta. So 1 half times 1 half, that will become 1 fourth, then sine 2 theta, evaluated from 0 to r, okay? And then, previously, we let x equals r sine theta. Since our equation here is written in terms of theta, then we need to write it back to the original variable x and r, okay? From our first substitution, we let x equals r sine theta, and that gives us x over r equals sine theta. And then, theta, the angle theta, is written as arc sine of x over r. Okay, and then by using this triangle, uh, I let this angle to be theta, 
and from here, okay, by the Sokatoa principle, sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So we have x here, r, the, the longest side, and this side of the triangle is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. Okay, and then uh, setting this up, since this is tet theta and this is sine to theta, then we need to look for a trigonometric identity such that the ang angle here will be expressed in terms of theta alone, not two theta. So by, by double angle identity, sine to theta is two sine theta cosine theta. And then simplifying, you just copy the remaining part of the, the expression. So you have r square, one half theta plus one fourth, then sine two theta is two sine theta cosine theta and evaluated from zero to r. And then simplifying further, you have r squared times the quantity one half theta plus one fourth times two, so that's one half sine theta cosine theta. And from here, we will now write this back to the original variable x and r, okay? So we have r square, one half theta, theta is replaced by arc sine x over r. So one half arc sine x over r plus one half sine theta is replaced by x over r. So sine theta, that's x over r. Then cosine theta will be drawn from this triangle. Again, by Sokatoa principle, cosine is adjacent side over hypotenuse. So that's the square root of r squared minus x squared over r. That's your cosine theta evaluated from zero to r. And now, since we have already written it back to the original variable x and r, we are now ready to replace x by the upper and the lower limits, respectively. So we have r square, one half, arc sine, x will be replaced by r. So we have r over r plus one half. Again, x will be replaced by r, r over r times the square root of r squared minus x squared will become r squared all over r. Then minus r squared, so this time x will be replaced by zero. So arc sine x over r will become zero over r plus one half x over r will become zero over r. The square root of r squared minus zero squared all over r. And then we simplify this portion. So you will notice that on this term, there's r squared minus r squared here, and then that will become zero then this will become 0 over r is 0. So arc sine 0 is still 0. Then there's 0 here, 0 over r, and then the whole term will become 0. So the only thing left is to simplify this portion. So you have r over r is equal to 1. So you're only left with r square 1 half arc sine of 1. And remember that arc sine of 1, you think of an angle whose sine value is equal to one and that is pi over two because sine pi over two is equal to one. So finally, we have one half, this one half, then r squared, then r sine of one is pi over two. Simplifying the area of this region, okay, sorry, the area of this subregion is equal to pi over four r squared. And do not forget that the area of the entire region is equal to four times the area of this subregion. So you have 4 times pi over 4 r square. And finally, we have the total area of the entire circle is pi r square. So that's it for now. And uh, you keep on tuning onto my channel. I'll be showing you some more videos on the area of region bounded by different curves.